<laughs> well, standardized, standardized dress code come about was uh, we, uh, you guys have heard us talk the last three or four months about early college high school, okay? And right before Christmas, we had our committee of about seven, and the college has about seven or eight people. We visited early college high schools throughout the state of Texas. And the one that has struck our attention the most is Hill Dobble, Hill Dobble down in the valley. Their demographics are almost identical to us. <coughs> They're the number one early college high school in the state of Texas and the 13th in the nation. Successful. Not only that, they have a standardized dress. So we're trying to model our early college high school after them, hoping to get TEA will approve ours, which we think they will. So therefore, if they're successful there, they've really talked about their dress. And uh, they went to a standardized dress to have more of an academic focus. So we have talked to our junior high campus and our high school campus about standardized dress and let's get a committee of kids together and some adults together and parents and uh, let's look at some options. Let's look at some uh, samples across the state of Texas. Hill Dog will be one of those. And let's see if it's worth changing the culture here in Big Spring as far as dress. Now we already know we're changing the culture academically here in Big Spring. Let's see if addressing the dress is something else we need to do. There's pros and there's cons. Um, so we're in the very preliminary stages. We wanted to mention that briefly. Our committees are being formed and then we'll start having individual meetings. Um, the, the, the only other thing that I would add to that is uh, on, on the pro side, uh, I would say that, um, you know, people may ask, well, why would you change uh, the dress code? Um, First of all, I would say that it, it's not implementing uniforms. Okay, we, we're not we're not implementing uniforms at the secondary level. It is just a, a standardized dress, um, which would basically include some sort of uh, polo type of shirt and and really uh, still staying with jeans. Okay, um, the reason for that is. Uh, we want to, to amp up the focus on academics. Uh, take away the focus on, on dress. Um, research shows, and I don't know if you care about research, but research does say that when you take away the, the, the focus on dress and, and you put the focus on academics, Anything you can do to put focus on academics, uh, that 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 will assist you on uh, being able to, uh, you know, move forward and and like Danny said, build a culture that that uh, is fully focused on learning and teaching. And so, everybody here knows that that that. Uh, we need to do that, um, and we're, we're all about that here in Vicksburg. It's not easy, uh, so anything that we can do. We're not saying we're going to do it, but we're saying that we're going to investigate it. And that's why we're going to put a committee of kids together, a committee of adults together, to see if it's, it, it's feasible to do uh, You know, I'm willing to do anything to improve. If it's going to be good for us, then I say we do it. If it's going to take away uh, distractions, I say we do it. Now, research says that when you do it, uh, that it brings unity. It brings, they call it social harmony. And social harmony takes away sometimes uh, the things that, that cause discipline, you know. Uh, some will say it does, some will say it doesn't. But, you know, uh, I think that uh, it's just going to depend on uh, you know, who you ask? Well, you know what? I asked my freshman daughter. This is just anecdotal data. But I asked my freshman daughter, I said, well, how would you feel? She said, Dad, you know, it would be great because I wouldn't have to get up and worry about what I'm going to put on. <laughs> and I said, really? She said, yeah. And she said, and, I, and I've asked my friends. And it would be good because that way none of us would have to compare or have to worry or this. I would know what shirt I'm going to wear, get up, put my shirt, put that polo on, put a pair of jeans on and I'm going to school. Research also says that it takes away, now listen to this, it takes away the gap between the have and the have-nots. 
in, in, in Big Spring, Texas, we're almost 75% low socioeconomic. And sometimes uh, that does cause problems, especially for those kids that can't afford to buy, uh, you know, the expensive tops, or expensive whatever. So we're going to look at it. And I think it, 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 it warrants investigation. So we're going to look at it and, and see where it comes out. But we want to the board to see where it comes out. But we're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to listen to the kids. We're going to listen to the adults. And we'll come back to you all to see where that, where that, you know, how it turns out. And, and any, any, any thoughts that y'all have we want to hear right now preliminary and as we, and as we move forward. Stephen, do you think that that would also uh, help us with like security, safety? Within our Re research, research does show that uh, it goes both ways. Uh, you know, one, one, there was an article that I read that said that counselors say that that, that sometimes uh, they can tell that uh, by by if, if clothes change drastically that that they can't tell if, if kids are having problems. Well, I don't know. You know. Uh, and then there's other research that shows that it helps with gangs. So, uh, and, and yeah, we do have gang problems here. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we're not going to be naive now. You know, we do have some issues with that. So, yeah, I, it could. But definitively, I can't tell you if it's going to help us or not. Uh, it's just going to have to be something that we, if we do institute it, then we would have to run some sort of uh, data gathering at the end of the year and then see if it, it did reduce discipline or not. And then let the numbers tell the story. But uh, I do know from talking to Hidalgo that, that in talking to the kids at Hidalgo that they liked it because, believe it or not, they didn't have to worry about what they were going to wear to school. Well, one of them said, I can get up later, later in the morning and just sleep later and know what I'm going to have to wear. I mean, I can see that. I remember being a kid, you know. It, it was it the, the college high that had this code, or is it the whole school? System? No, it was a, it, because it's a it's a standalone high school. It was the entire school. The, the entire school. The entire high school had. But what about junior high and elementary? That's, I'm asking about the other. School. Well, we're doing right now. We're going to look at six through twelve. Mm -hmm. All right, so you are broadening it more than they have. Yes, but that, no, but they had six through twelve also. Oh, they did? Yes. Okay. okay. Well, I already shared with you, I, as long as the, the uniforms would be a bus. That's why we're not going to call it, we're not going to say that. Yeah, yeah, I like the idea of options. Um, and then you still have to wrestle with uh, those folks who opt out not to do it. What are you going to do? And that's where it breaks down. Well, if we, if, let's, let's put it this way, if we, if, I mean, you could do it different ways. If you vote and you get a 60% vote, they're not going to have an option. So you, how can you keep kids from going to school based on, on well, right now, whether they wear a public shirt or not? I think you got well, you really got to think this through because okay. there there are there are like I said we went to a school and we got really excited and there was a there was an elementary school who had decided to do this and um, the the first that fall half the kids showed up with these uniforms and wore uniforms and half did not. What are you going to do with 50% of the school population that doesn't come dressed the way they're supposed to? Well, I think what do you do with kids that come to school with those mid-thigh waistlines? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. The yeah, that, those, those are questions. That, that's non-compliance non -compliance questions that you deal with just as, as if they're, they're not, not compliant. So, you know, we, we have protocols in place right now that deal with dress code issues. All I can tell you is it didn't even last a year and they sure. gave up on it because it, there were kids just come to school dress. Well, that, that's why we're investigating it. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, you know, I can't tell you yeah. how this is going to be. I mean, I like the idea of options. I'd be all for it. Well, the, the options would be that, that, you know, we would have uh, more than just one, one color polo, you know, and, and it could be like we could have four colors, you know, and so, and that's what Hidalgo does. You know, they have four different colored polos, uh, and so they do give them options. And so that, that, and that's what we'll, we'll look at. Sure. Have you talked to Mike? Yes. And he's, he thinks he can enforce it? Yeah. We've talked to him and Jordan Bancroft. He, they're, they're in favor of it. Oh, yeah. They were the ones that actually came to me. But I know I know Mike can enforce the dress code. Yeah. They've done it. 
Mike was actually the one that came to me when we went and visited. Frankly, I've been in favor of it for a long time. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, here's the deal. Um, <coughs> if some things, check, number one, change is hard. And, and you know, if, if we want, if we're serious about, you know, making the changes that we're looking at making academically, then, you know, it, it, it's going to take... Some, some courageous moves. And so uh, when Mike and I talked about it, we had those discussions. Mike, now, you know, I know you're fired up about it and all, uh, but it's not me going to be the one enforcing it. Now, I'm going to be hearing things as if, you know, like, okay, appeals and things like that. But, and I don't mind doing that. I will, I will back you. But you're going to be on the front line. So if we have such a, a large socio and economic low socio and economic population, when a kid comes and says we can't afford these public ships, my my mom has said we can't afford these ships. What are you going to do? Well, I mean, deny them an education? No, 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 no. no. We'll, we'll we'll figure out ways to either uh, we're, we're we're putting it way out in front of the board even. So we'll, you know, I, I'm not ready to answer that question for you. Let's just, let's just do, let's just say that right now. Legislature, they won't let us deny anyone yeah. the appropriate education. That's, that's there, there, there's, there's, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ryan is here, and through Title I, we could do something, right, Mr. Ryan? That's right. But we have, we have difficulty with a lot of homeless people. Yeah. You know, that we have to buy stuff for them anyhow. So. Yeah. Right. So through Title I, there, there's funds. Okay. Yeah. We have service organizations to get the other entities in town and help us out. And also, I believe those those polo shirts are not as expensive. They're as not. The other things yeah. that they wear. But we get a package. So it's something to look at. That's all the same. Well, we just need more information. Yeah, we will. And that's that's. I wanted just to so y'all would know. And again, so that um, you know, we're starting the process early in the spring. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm in favor of it. Okay. In favor of pursuing. Me too. I grew up in uniform in Catholic school, so I'm all for it. Look how you turn. There we go. Not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you have time, hey, hey, I'm in uniform. Time, we all have to wear uniforms. Um, I'll vote. Or I'll vote. Okay, moving on to the next subject.